Okay, let's bring in journalist Ian Miles Chong. He's been on the Twitter journey with us, a great voice on a great story. Ian, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, there's a bit of controversy surrounding it. The journalists are saying, well, we didn't technically dox Elon. We just posted a link to the guy who was doxing Elon. Where do you stand on this? Well, I stand on the side of Elon Musk because the rules are simple. Don't publish live tracking information of anyone, any individual, not just Elon Musk, but anybody else. But I'm sure you can understand where Elon's coming from. Just a couple of days ago, his car was attacked and his son was in it. Now, fortunately, he didn't get hurt, right? But the fact is that information uh, that enabled that individual to go after Elon Musk's son uh, was published live on the website. And that's the reason why he took it down. I mean, wouldn't you do the same thing to protect your family? I ask this question to everyone who's taking an academic stance on the situation, claiming that it's a violation of free speech principles. And I need to remind you that it's not... Uh, a First Amendment issue at all. It's not a free speech issue. Stalking is not protected under free speech. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and Ian, the um, and, and that was awful. What happened? That that guy that Ian that he took a video of him jumped on the car. His kid was in the car. So if, here's the thing with these these liberal these leftist media people, Donny or Sullivan, and the rest of them, Oliver Darcy over there at CNN, uh, Aaron Rupar. Some of them are just unbelievable because when. Under Jack Dorsey and, and the rest of the, the shenanigans that were going on, when they banned or shadow banned conservatives, it was because Twitter is a private company. They have a right to do what they want to do as a private company. And now it's even more private than when Twitter was a publicly traded yet private company or whatever, uh, publicly traded yet owned by the shareholders. Even more private now owned by Elon. They don't want to mm -hmm. hear that argument anymore, do they? No, they don't. I mean, before, you can scour their timelines and look at where they uh, single-handedly called out Trump. Uh, they called out uh, Trump supporters, any conservative in general who was complaining about the censorship, the mass censorship of half the country. And they said, hey, you know, if you don't like it, you can leave. It's a private company. It can do what it wants. And now suddenly, because the shoe is on the other foot, Oh, now that's a problem. How dare Elon Musk silence journalists? Uh, he, his impact is going to be felt worldwide and world leaders elsewhere are going to do the same thing to uh, their citizens. It's like, excuse me? I mean, if they're dictators in their country, I'm pretty sure they're not waiting for Elon Musk to do anything. They can do it all on their own. It's been done in Turkey, for instance. You know, and, and you know, <laughs> at one point, Elon, late last night, he, he threw off nine journalists. And rightly so. He can, yep. he can do that. His company. I actually agree with what he did. I mean, look, I'm a free speech defender. I'm libertarian. I think the Constitution isn't to be interpreted. It's, 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 it's a written rule. It's not a living and breathing Constitution. It is what it is. And the free speech, First Amendment right to, to speak, even hate speech, is protected. However, you can't walk in to a crowded movie theater room and yell fire because that's dangerous to the people in the room. I believe free speech should be protected, but when you're showing the location of someone who may have haters, you're opening that up to be mm -hmm. possible assassination attempts, and therefore free speech does have limits. It absolutely does. I mean, the, the journalists will even agree with you. I mean, imagine if, and, and I don't have, you don't have to imagine this. They even said so in a space last night where they were complaining about being harassed and doxxed themselves, you know, like Taylor Lorenz from the Washington Post. She's complaining about how she gets harassed and how she gets doxxed, never mind the fact that she does the same thing to lips of TikTok. But it's okay when she does it. It's not okay when it happens to her. And if it was happening to all these journalists, these uh, dozen or so journalists who uh, doxed Elon Musk, they would be complaining on Twitter about how Elon Musk is endangering their lives by not taking action against the people who harass and stalk and dox them. So it's okay when they do it. It's not okay when other people do it. And, you know, one might call it hypocrisy, but I would argue that it's hierarchy, not hypocrisy. They're the aristocracy, we're the peasants, and so we have to live by their standards. It's as simple as that. Indeed. Indeed. Well, we don't have to, at least on Twitter, we don't have to anymore. And he mentioned spaces. That's Twitter spaces. By the way, folks, Ian, Ian, Host some amazing Twitter spaces. And I've, talk, I've been allowed to talk directly to Elon Musk on one of Elon Miles Chong's Twitter spaces hosts. So you got to check it out. Ian, thank you. Always good having you. We'll get you back again soon. Absolutely. Thank you.